The stated objective of the Resource Efficiency flagship, flagship Initiative is to decouple economic growth from the use of resources, support the shift towards a low-carbon economy, increase the use of renewable energy sources, modernize our transport sector, and promote energy efficiency. It's a compelling idea that we can have continued economic growth whilst managing sustainability of our resources. But it is one that makes complete sense. If you plot on a graph the most competitive countries in Europe against the most resource efficient countries in Europe, you find there is no contradiction between competitiveness and resource efficiency. On the contrary, there is a highly positive correlation. Some of this may be due to the importance of the services sector in more competitive economies, but the correlation is too great for that to explain it all. So, a resource efficient Europe makes environmental, economic, business and geopolitical sense. It is the kind of a compelling idea that should generate high-level political commitment. And I'm sure it will do when heads of states come to endorse the strategy, as I hope they will later this week at the European Council. But a commitment must mean more than resource efficiency becoming just a fashionable and handy buzzword. One that people use without really knowing what it means, what some call greenwashing. That commitment must be backed up with a proper understanding of what resource efficiency is and of what each actor must do to make it happen. That is where it gets uh, difficult for me. As European Commissioner for Environment, I might have the tools in my toolbox to develop environmental legislation and ensure people comply with it, but resource efficiency is a truly cross-cutting affair. When we talk about using resources, we talk about all forms of economic activity and therefore about the many policy areas that touch on them. At the European level, I will have to work closely with my colleagues, particularly the commissioners responsible for energy, transport, industry, trade, agriculture, fisheries, research, and also some others. I want to ensure we have the means to have a structured discussion and develop initiatives that will guide and motivate all the relevant commission services. But even this coordinated and cross-cutting community level approach is too limited. We also need member states to buy in to the concept. Subsidiarity, it's too often cited as an excuse to do nothing. We must rather use it as a powerful tool to act at the most effective level. And in resource efficiency, that frequently also means in the regions and in municipalities. Resource efficiency will only be achieved through a multi-level government strategy. This is implicit in the EU 2020 structure. Whilst integrated guidelines will cover the scope of EU priorities and targets, country-specific recommendations will be addressed to member states and monitored. We have to make sure that each and every member state understands clearly what they are expected to achieve. But even a coordinated, multi-level partnership of public authorities, it's too limited. We also need the private sector with us. If we want to achieve resource efficiency, we have to work with the people who are using the resources. And I must say that here the first reactions are good. My meetings with the business community suggest that they fully understand the logic of resource efficiency. For them, it is rather natural and logical everyday life. They understand that we are basically talking about resource productivity, less in, more out. And even that is too limited. We will need to change the behavior of European consumers, to work on people's awareness and to influence their habits. 
So you can see that I have quite a challenge and I'm going to need quite a lot of help. We really are at the beginning. If this policy were a car, you would probably be looking at a shiny body but without wheels and a real engine. So why now? If resource efficiency is such a compelling idea and so logical, why haven't we been doing all this for the last 50 years? Well, we are not starting from the scratch. We have many good initiatives at European level. The Sustainable Production and Consumption Program, Sustainable Industrial Policy, the Raw Materials Initiative, the Energy and Climate Package, the, strategy, the Strategic en uh, Energy Technolo Technologies Plan. But what we don't have is a way of integrated resource efficiency more generally across all relevant policies. To illustrate why that has not happened sooner, you can look at the example of the energy sector. In the 70s, we were spending four times what we spend today on research into alternative energies. Why? Because oil prices went up. Why did it not last? Because prices went down again. Resources are getting more valuable and it is that change in relative prices that will lead to real change. Even waste is becoming increasingly valuable. Yesterday I met the vice chairman of the Chinese National Development and Reform Commission. He told me that their largest municipal park in China it's capable of recycling one million tons of copper per year. The largest copper mine in China produces less than half of that. They even are calling these parks city mines. Such is their importance in generating raw materials. We are becoming aware that the arguments for using our resources carefully are not only moral, they are also economic. For example, Pavan Sukhdev and his team have recently produced a report on the economics of ecosystems and biodiversity, shortly TIP. This I see as doing for biodiversity what Lord Stern's report did for climate change, demonstrating its economic consequences. Their first results tell us that each year the world is losing land-based ecosystem services that provided us with roughly 50 billion euros of services and goods annually. Their business as usual scenario shows that the cumulative welfare losses could reach 7% of global GDP by 2050 with the EU suffering the most. If we want to reduce stress on natural resources, we must change relative prices of different inputs in the economy to reflect the real value of those resources. Unless we change these prices, these price signals, our alternative will be to revert to the heavy hand of regulation. That would not be efficient and it would not be politically possible and even policies is, need to be resource efficient. If we want to change our behavior as individuals or as businesses, we need the right incentives and, then often, and that often means prices that reflect the real costs of, and consequences of our actions in the short, mid-term mid and also long-term. Taking a life cycle approach to the products and services we buy.